My ex-wife broke up with me a decade ago, three months before our child was born. She said I wasn't fit to be a father due to my issues with pain meds. I'd been in a wreck that caused severe spinal damage and pain and formed a habit that I admit took me a lot longer to kick than I'm proud of. She was never supportive of that particular subject, but her leaving me over it was out of the blue. Court said custody would be 50-50 and it has been since. In that decade, I've done okay, remarried a wonderful woman who I've had two girls with and was promoted into a position with a seven-figure salary. My ex has not done well. She's remarried twice and was broken up with both times, filed for bankruptcy and lives in what I can only describe as a dive apartment. I make sure my son is well taken care of. My wife, girls and I spend every moment we're legally entitled to spend with him and we offer to include him in literally everything, which his mother frequently declines when it's on her time. My son and ex both know that if he needs anything, he can call and ask. I frequently sent food and clothing, etc., and several times put them both up in a hotel because their apartment was being fumigated or similar. Both my parents, my ex's parents, my sister and, of course, my ex, feel I should be financially supporting my ex. Their reasoning is that my son stays with her half the time, she is the mother of my son, and during those times he's with her, they're both living in squalor, and my son gets upset every time he has to go with his mother, who he started saying he hates as of late. When she says she won't feed him because it's expensive and to call me because I have money, it's no wonder. So far as I'm aware, she can afford to feed him. She's working two jobs, but she'd rather I pay his expenses so she can afford expensive shoes and the minimum payment on her maxed out credit cards. I've tried to get sole custody, but the courts made it clear that's not happening because she has a good stable income. The court told me if I tried to sue her again without proof of gross neglect, they consider me to be harassing her. It's been extremely frustrating. I've held my ground thus far as I feel I've no responsibility for her and I've no desire to support her using my son against me for her own financial gain, which is exactly what she's doing. My wife says she sees both sides. So, am I the idiot for not financially supporting my ex-wife because it affects my son? Edit. The court did not order child support. At the time we separated, my ex was making slightly more than I was and got to keep the house, which she lost. Not the idiot. The audacity. She already doesn't spend her money on her own son. She spends it on designer stuff. She has two jobs but wants you to pay the kid's expensive when he lives with her, plus she will take and spend any money you give your son. She needs to do better and actually take care of her son on her time with her money. OP, save proof of everything she says and does that is neglectful of your children. Text messages, emails, etc. where she's saying anything like that. Hire a good attorney and bring her butt back to court again. You can even report to your son's school if his mother is neglecting him. They are obligated to report it. You clearly provide for your child and are a good parent. You can prove to the court that she is unfit if you have sufficient documentation. You need to speak to an attorney. You are not the idiot for not wanting to financially support her. It's only your job to financially support your kid. If you make seven figures, you sure can support your ex a little if only so your son lives in better circumstances. A few hundred bucks mean nothing to you but will change a lot for them. And yes, I get it. She messed you over but you definitely came out way better. Now be a good winner and act appropriately. You are the idiot, OP. I agree with you. Personally, if I had the means, I would never allow my child to live in squalor. It doesn't sound like your ex was mean or vindictive. You had issues and you seemed bitter because she left you. What kind of mom would she be if she raised her kid with someone addicted? She's poor and struggling, not lazy. She works two jobs. Talk to your lawyer again. There are other ways you can support your ex without giving her money personally. Help her get a better job. Get gift cards to a shopping store or make grocery deliveries once a week. Maybe you buy a condo for your ex and kid to live in. And yeah, she gets booted on his 18th birthday. I understand you have some bad feelings for your ex, who you feel didn't support you, but she is still your child's mother and you are, in essence, punishing your child. Been with my wife for two years. I have two children from a previous relationship who are kindergarten age and two years older. Currently, she's seven months pregnant, we're married and we've been living together for five months. It's been an adaption for everyone, mostly the children. During our relationship, even before living together, I knew my wife got the occasional headache. She takes painkillers but says they don't help, so she'll usually spend the day in our bedroom and sleep. The kids are at home, my wife has a headache, and I'm working from home. 
Kids are doing what they normally do, playing. My wife texts me asking to keep them from making so much noise. I was in a meeting when she texted, so I didn't look at it until an hour later. She's upset, but the way I see it is, it's the children's home. They're playing? What am I supposed to say? My wife has a headache, go read a book. I don't think I'm the idiot. My wife does. Figured I'd ask, am I the idiot? My wife has a headache, go read a book. Yes, that's exactly what you should say. My daughter is three, and when I have a headache, I say to her, Honey, would you please quiet down, I have a headache. And then she calms down. So your kids should be able to do this too. Yep, you are the idiot. Not seeing the text for an hour is acceptable. Refusing to teach your kids empathy makes you an idiot. You could easily have told your kids that their stepmom has a headache and that noise is really bothering her. Could they do something quieter? You shouldn't be angry at them if they fail, but you should slowly teach them to be aware of others and respect their needs, within reason. She's also seven months pregnant, so she likely can't take her regular medication for this headache. Ever had a migraine? And it's the children's home? Uh, it's her home too. She's not some witchy woman for wanting you all to respect her when she's seven months pregnant and has a migraine. She wasn't asking a whole lot. Put a movie on for the kids? Send them outside to play? Ugh. Teach your kids some compassion for others. I honestly can't believe you're refusing to make accommodations for someone you care about. Not the idiot. I'm on your side here. She's about to be a mother herself and learn real quick how to deal with noise, headache or not. What will she do with a screaming baby while she has these headaches? All this beating you up for the kids playing too loud is BS. What are they supposed to do when stuck in the house while dad works and stepmom sleeps? Why couldn't she tell the kids to quiet down? How hard could that have been for her? I'm a teen male and super gay. I've been out publicly for four years now, but honestly it wasn't hard for anyone to tell before that. My family has been chill about it and I never had any issues. Almost no issues. My mom's brother and his wife give me the that's nice while trying so, so hard to force a smile whenever it's brought up. It's not so much my uncle as it is my aunt. She's super Catholic and super Irish. We do Christmas with my mom's side the weekend before and I was sitting next to their pre-tween daughter. My other cousin was there with his girlfriend. He's my age. Little cousin said in her adorable young voice to me, why don't you have a girlfriend like my brother? Honestly, without really thinking anything of it, I said, I won't ever have a girlfriend. I like boys. I'm gay. Cue the hardcore stare from my aunt while my uncle tried to tell a story to distract her. It didn't start a big fight then and there, but today I heard all about how my aunt called my mom and really gave it to her. I had zero right to tell their daughter what gay was. They're the parents and they will decide when she can know about it, etc. After my mom told me all this, I questioned why they needed to be secretive about it. I asked if they thought it was shameful. Mom assured me no, but they claim, as parents, it's up to us to teach our child about that. My uncle has since called me, basically begging, for his sake, to call my aunt and apologize. And get this, to try to walk back the comment next time I see her. He's giving me the, you know how she is, just apologize so she can stop annoying me about it. So, am I the idiot for doing this? Also, screw apologizing, that's not happening, lol. Not the idiot. She's clearly old enough to recognize her brother's relationship. If the kid knows boys sometimes have girlfriends, it's very reasonable for them to know that some boys have boyfriends instead. I like boys is a very age-appropriate way of saying you're gay. If the kid had followed up with, how does that work, and you'd gone into details, it would have been as inappropriate as giving her the birds and the bees, but you didn't. And she may well have friends at school who have two moms or two dads. There's nothing wrong with being yourself and telling the truth. You did nothing wrong. Does your aunt expect to shield this child from all the different types of people in the world that she doesn't agree with? Also, what were you supposed to do? Lie and tell this kid, Oh, thanks for asking, my dear child. I am very straight and actively looking and will find a woman I would like to have a romantic relationship with someday. Um, no. Your aunt is an idiot with no common sense. OP, don't apologize for anything. Just continue being your awesome self. Your nibblings will see that you're gay, you're awesome, and there's nothing wrong with that, which is something that needs to be normalized far more than it is. Your uncle needs to grow a spine and stop asking other people to kowtow to his wife so he doesn't have to deal with her unreasonable tantrums. 
My dad has been married to Joy for two years. She has two kids who are an infant male and a female kindergartner. My siblings, teen male and female, and I, older teen male, live with our dad and Joy. I don't consider Joy my parent or her kids my siblings, but I'm not a jerk either, so when I went Christmas shopping, I did get them gifts, but nothing like what I got my siblings. I got my sister this makeup case she's been wanting, some decals for her Switch, and got her some packs of Animal Crossing cards. I got my brother three video games he's wanted for a while, and I got him a second controller for his PS5. I work part-time and I save most of my money so I can afford to do this. I got a toy for each of my step-siblings, not even really sure what they were, but they weren't very expensive. I was wrapping them while everyone else was out. Joy came home early and saw me wrapping them and asked where the rest of the gifts were. I said that was it, and she got mad at me because she realised her kids got way less compared to my siblings, and the effort was put into my siblings more. She told me I was old enough to treat them all exactly the same and to imagine how it would feel for her kids to think I don't love them the same. She complained to my dad when he got home, and he asked me about it. I told him her kids don't mean the same to me as my siblings, so I got them something to be nice versus actually wanting to and trying to be their big brother. Dad spoke to Joy after me and she was annoyed that I didn't see them all as equally as my siblings. She questioned me about who else I bought gifts for and I told her it was none of her business. She told me I live in her house, she's the mom of the house, etc. I told her I don't have a mom and that she's not my mom and I don't owe her the information about who I spend my money on gifts for. Things are now so tense. It's been more than a week and my dad asked if I would consider spending more on Joy's kids to keep the peace. I told him I wasn't willing to do that, so Dad bought some extra gifts for me to say are from me. Joy was angry and said I was a little idiot because I shouldn't be getting blood family better gifts for being blood when we're all equally one family. Am I the idiot? Edit, I literally don't have a mom. My siblings and I were born with help for Dad to be our sole parent. He became a single parent to three. The woman who helped has no legal rights over us, so no mom. Not the idiot. You're a teen, a child. You're not obligated to spend anything on anyone at your age. The fact that you've used the money you've saved from your part-time job to get something nice for your siblings and step-siblings shows that you're a caring older brother. Your step-siblings are young. They have no concept of the monetary value of anything. They'll just be happy they got something. Your stepmother needs to back all the way off, and I say this as a stepmother myself. She cannot force a sibling bond between you in the same way as she cannot force a parent-child relationship between you. It takes time, and putting this pressure on will drive a wedge in. Your dad needs to step up here and defend you. Also, you, cringing at mom of the house, that lady has some nerve to say that. Ha ha ha, agree. Like, I am technically the mother of the house in my home, but I can't fathom lording that over my biological children, much less a stepchild that already made it clear they don't want a maternal relationship with me. Frankly, I can't fathom saying that with a straight face. I'm the mother of this house. Buy them glitter, slime and stickers. The unholy trinity. Make Joy regret opening her mouth. Months ago, my co-worker, Debbie, used me to get a raise. I was initially happy for her, but she cannot complete her work independently and goes to me for help every day. For months, I've been explaining the same concepts again. I'm irritated that she used me, but couldn't pull her weight. Debbie tries to offload her work onto other co-workers and me because she's so busy despite having the least amount of work on the team. Debbie also deletes important emails from clients. I don't even know what to say about that. Debbie doesn't believe she's being compensated fairly for the amount of work she does, so she started looking elsewhere months ago. I've been overworked for so long and I cannot handle this anymore. I regularly work long overtime hours to ensure deadlines are met because I'm assigned more essential duties. Now I feel like I've been babysitting Debbie's work. In addition, I've been getting physically sick from working here. I thought I could just suck it up and told myself things would get better, but two weeks ago something just hit and I started applying. I quickly found a new place and will leave in two weeks from Friday. When Debbie found out on Friday, she was furious. She told me she felt blindsided that I was leaving. She tried to convince me to stay a bit longer, saying my departure would cause her and the team much hardship. When I refused, Debbie asked where I was going. She told me that she's been looking for months, but she couldn't find anything. She asked if I could help her find a new place, since I found one so quickly, but I didn't answer. 
I just wanted to lay low for the remaining days. On Friday, I finally left after regular hours, but Debbie tried reaching out to me for an emergency. Her past emergencies were situations I've taught her before, so I suspect this is no different. Then Debbie started calling and texting my personal cell, but I've been ignoring her. Finally, she texted me that I shouldn't be so selfish now that I'm leaving, and I shouldn't leave her and the team high and dry halfway through my work. Debbie also has been calling and texting, asking if we could talk about her getting a new position. I've been ignoring that too. Part of me feels bad for Debbie because she's not happy here, and my departure will cause her hardship. The team cannot function with me as I was the top performer, but I'm so burned out that I don't even want to work the last two weeks. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Stop feeling bad. New employees are given a pass for so long, but eventually you have to be able to pull your own weight. Debbie can't, but you've been pulling her weight for so long that she's probably freaking out. So, I would tell her the truth. You are not her babysitter, she gets paid more than she deserves for the work she does already, and she is a grown damn adult. So if she can't get her own new job, it's not your responsibility to find her a job. Agreed. No wonder new people don't like me at work. I don't sugarcoat things. OP, please don't tell her where you will be working. What if she follows you and continues this madness? Ugh, I can't stand lazy mooch co-workers. She's a leech. Maintain those boundaries as you finish out your time. Set the new expectation and be clear and concise. Debbie, I'm not available to assist you. Debbie will depend on you or anyone who will take her on in any job. People like that are not happy anywhere. So please continue to ignore her or block her. You are not her ticket to something bigger and better. This is harassment.